What's up everybody, Mr. Kozad back again with another video lesson. Uh, man, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm thrilled that you found us. Uh, whether you're here because you have to be or you want to be, man, I'm so happy that you're here. I got to tell you, it's a great day to be alive. And we're learning today about adding and subtracting rationals. This is part one of a two-part video series. Uh, so if you just absolutely love part one, man, I can't wait for you to watch part two. So uh, let's jump right in, get uh, something to write with, get something to write on, and let's have some fun. Here we go. So our very first example is 5a squared over 6b plus 9 over 14a squared b squared, okay? So when we add fractions before, when you've added fractions in the past in your history, okay, what has had to be true is you've had to have a common denominator, and nothing changes when we start introducing variable terms in our denominators. Our goal here is still going to be to have a common denominator. In fact, more specifically, we're going to have something called the LCD, the least common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to teach you in this first few, uh, we have four problems we're going to do today. I'm going to teach you a surefire way to identify the least common denominator. This is a critically important skill to learn for 8.2. So please pay attention. Go back, pause, rewind, watch it a hundred times, whatever you need to do. This is critically important. So here we go. Here's how you identify the least common denominator when you have to add or subtract rational expressions. Okay. The very first thing I'm going to try to go slow through this too, by the way. So the very first thing that I look at is I look at the numbers six and 14, and I want to find the least common multiple of six and 14. Okay, so what that means is you multiply each one of them um, until you get the same number. Okay, so that uh, least common multiple of 6 and 14 is actually 42. Okay, 6 times 7 gives us 42. 14 times 3 gives us 42 as well. Okay, so then the next thing you look at is you look at one of the variable terms. I just like to go in alphabetical order. So I see that I have an a squared. Now, notice in this, in both denominators together, you only have one a squared term, okay? So when you're building your least common denominator, you want to make sure that you always have each variable represented and you want it to be to the highest power that you see, okay? The highest power that you see. So that's going to be a squared is going to be a part of my least common denominator. So then I also see that I have a b to the first and a b squared, now, using the same logic that I just explained, your LCD always wants to have each variable represented, but to the highest power that you see it. So in this case, that's going to be B squared. Okay, now the reason that I write that down is it's going to be important for us as we uh, start to approach this problem. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write this first fraction, 5A squared over 6B. And I'm actually going to multiply this by something so that I get 42a squared b squared in my denominator, okay? So you already have a six. So ask yourself, what do I need to multiply this six by to get it to be 42? And that would be a seven, okay? I also need to get an a squared in that denominator and I need to b squared. Now I already have a b to the first. So to get that to be b squared, I only have to multiply by another b. Now with fractions, uh, when we do common denominators, we multiply by the same thing on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by 7a squared b on the top and also on the bottom. Repeat the same process for the second fraction. 9 over 14a squared b squared. Now again, what we want here is we want this denominator to be 42a squared b squared. Well, I already have the a squared. I already have the b squared. So all I need is to get this 14 to be a 42. So I'm going to multiply that by 3 over 3. Now when I clean that up, um, my uh, first fraction becomes 35. 7 times 5 is 35. a to the fourth, b, all over 42, a squared, b squared, plus... 9 times 3 is 27 over 42a squared, b squared. Now, once you get these denominators to be the same, you can add these together. Okay, you, That becomes one fraction. Now, remember, we don't add the denominators together. 
that denominator is going to stay 42a squared b squared, but we can take the terms in the numerator and can add those together like so. So we get 34a to the fourth b plus 27 all over 42. And that is my final answer. Okay? The most critical part of this problem was identifying the least common denominator. If it's the least, the L stands for least. If you get the least common denominator, then when you get here, you know that you will not have to simplify any further. Okay? All right. I, that was quick. A lot. Let's keep moving. Uh, we've got three more problems to do. Okay, so here we go. Example 10 x plus 10 over 3x minus 15 minus 3x plus 15 all over 6x minus 30. Okay, now the first thing that I would do on this problem is I would rewrite each one of these and simplify the denominators. So 3x minus 15, I can factor out a 3. I get x 3 times x minus 5. The second fraction, okay, I can factor out a 6 from that second fraction, and I end up getting x minus 5. Okay, now, let's talk about the LCD. Okay, so remember, start with the numbers 3 and 6. What's the least common multiple of 3 and 6? Well, that's actually 6, okay? And then I need to make sure that I have an x minus 5 as a part of my uh, denominator, and it needs to be to the highest degree that you see it. So notice you look at the exponents. They're both 1. So I can just do x minus 5 to the first. Okay. Now, when I go through and I multiply this, I've got x plus 10 over 3 times x minus 5. And you're asking yourself, what do I need to multiply this denominator by to get it to be 6x minus 5? Well, it's already 3 times x minus 5. So we're going to multiply that by 2 over 2. Now, the second fraction actually already has the least common denominator in it, so we don't have to multiply that by anything. So when I multiply the top, I get 2x plus 20 all over 6 times x minus 5 minus 3x uh, minus almost made a bad mistake, okay? Uh, oh, actually, it's not minus yet. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. What's that saying about getting the cart ahead of the horse? I don't know. Okay, so here we go. Now, when we actually do this, you got to be careful with subtraction. You've got to distribute the subtraction sign to both terms. So this ends up being 2x minus 3x is um, minus x. And then 20 minus 15 is plus 5, all over 6 times x minus 5. Ooh, and there is a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky way that we can factor this even further, okay? Notice the top, negative x plus 5, and the bottom, x minus 5. They look so, so close, but they're not quite the same. Well, if I factor out a negative 1 on the top, then there it is. I get x minus 5 on the top and the bottom, which cancels. I'm running out of room. I'm sorry about this. I'll just do it up here, which equals negative 1 over 6. All that mess simplified to negative 1 sixth. Okay? All right, let's take this and apply it to our next one, number 3. Okay? 3 over 2x minus 8 minus 6 over x squared minus 5x plus 4. Again, first step is to rewrite this and factor everything completely. 3 over 2 times x minus 4 minus 6 over x squared minus 5x plus 4. Uh, if you do not know how to factor trinomials, if you do not know how to factor trinomials, stop what you're doing now and go to my channel and find the video. It's called The Easiest Way to Factor Quadratics. Watch that video, and it'll walk you through a technique on factoring quadratics if you don't already have one. Okay, so this is going to end up being x minus 4 times x minus 1. Okay? Now, let's talk about the LCD. The LCD here, 
I start with just the numbers. I need to have a 2. I also need to have an x minus 4. I also need to have an x minus 1. Again, you want to make sure that every term in your denominator is accounted for. The hardest one to see sometimes is the x minus 4. Because you think there's two of some people think, that, oh, there's two. So shouldn't that mean that there's uh, x minus 4 squared? And the answer is no. You always want to look at the exponent, and you take that term to the highest power that you see it. We don't see an x minus 4 squared, so we just take x minus 4 as our least common denominator. So first fraction, 3 over 2 times x minus 4. What do we need to multiply that denominator by to get our LCD? Well, it's missing the x minus 1. So I multiply by the x minus 1 on the top and the x minus 1 on the bottom. And then I take the second fraction, 6 over x minus 4 times x minus 1. And I ask myself, what is that missing? Well, the only thing that that's missing is the 2. So multiply that by 2 over 2. So then we can actually do some multiplication here. We get 3x minus 3 all over 2 times x minus 4 times x minus 1 minus 12 over 2 x minus 4 times x minus 1. Now, once you get your common denominators, then what you can do is you can combine your like terms on the top. So we have 3x, remember to distribute, minus 12, or minus 3, minus 12 more, gets us minus 15, all over 2, times x minus 4, times x minus 1. Final answer. Final answer. Again, uh, you could, if you wanted to, multiply this out. That's fine. It wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but you do not have to. You can leave it um, as uh, two binomials. Okay? All right, just one more problem um, that we're going to do together, and i got to tell you before we start, it is a fun one. Okay, so this is the most complicated least common denominator that you're going to see in this video. Um, there'll be some more complicated ones in part two, but pay close attention to getting our LCD. The single hardest part of this problem is getting the LCD. So pay close attention. If you've been zoning out, pay attention right now. Okay, just the last problem in this video, you can do it. All right, here we go, the LCD. So first thing that I look at is all of these denominators are already factored. I don't have to do any extra work to get them factored. That was so kind of us to give you a problem where they're all already factored. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you wanna go through and as you're building your least common denominator, you want to make sure that every term is represented, and it's represented to the highest power that you see it. Let's get the hard one out of the way right now. x plus 1, and then x plus 1 squared. Clearly, x plus 1 squared is the highest power that you see the x plus 1 term occur. Let me say that again. When you have terms that are the same, x plus 1 and x plus 1, you always want to look at the greatest exponent, and that is what needs to be a part of your LCD. So our LCD needs to have an x plus 1 squared. It also needs to have an x minus 4. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully go through each one of these three fractions, and we're going to see what we get. So we have 1 over x plus 1. And we got to decide what is that missing in its denominator. Well, it already has x plus 1 to the first, but we need it to be x plus 1 squared. So multiply it by another x plus 1 and multiply it by an x minus 4. So an x plus 1 on the top and an x minus 4 on the top as well. Now stop there for just a minute and think about what you have. If you take x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 4, will you get the least common denominator? If yes, you know you picked the right thing. Okay, So let's move on to the next fraction. We have 2 over x plus 1, the quantity squared. And then you got to decide what is that denominator missing. Well, all that it's missing is the x minus 4. So multiply by an x minus 4 on the top and an x minus 4 on the bottom. And I am writing way too big. Okay. I'm going to run out of room. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, So we have 3 over x minus 4. Again, same question. What is that denominator missing? Well, it's missing the x plus 1 squared. 
Okay, so we've got three different fractions that we're going to clean up. Okay, now here's the, here's the bad news that I've been avoiding telling you up until now. I waited all the way to the last problem to tell you this. Okay, I've been very, very clear that in our denominators, we do not need to multiply these out. But unfortunately, our numerators, we do need to multiply those out because we're going to end up getting like terms that we can simplify. Okay, so we're going to have to actually do 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 4. Okay, which isn't too bad. We end up getting x squared uh, minus 3x minus 4 all over that big denominator, x plus 1 squared times x minus 4 plus uh, 2x minus 8 all over that same denominator, x plus 1 squared times x minus 4. And our third one, um, this one's a little bit more tricky, so I'll split it in two parts. 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 all over that same denominator, x plus 1 squared times x minus 4. So now what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to combine all of our like terms. Okay, so I've got an x squared uh, plus a 3x squared. That's going to give me 4x squared. Now be careful with your x terms here. Okay, you've got a minus 3 plus 2 gives me negative 1 plus 2 more is, um, I'm, ooh, I almost made a big mistake. 2 times 3 is 6, so 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 minus 3 is actually 5, so that's plus 5x. And then let's do our constants. So minus 4 minus 8 gives me negative 12 plus 3 times 1 gives me minus 9, minus 9. And that's all over that, that same common denominator that we've had the whole problem. x plus 1 squared times x minus 4. And you, my people, are done. You're done. That's a final answer. So box it. Feel proud of yourself. Y'all, that's the lesson. That's part one of uh, adding and subtracting. Um, rational expressions. Come back for part two where we look specifically at complex fractions, y'all. It is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see you. So roll right over, go check out part two, and have a good rest of your day. See you.